which stock to buy goes away in that sense. Uh, so that is important. Passive funds in my core, active funds in my satellite to build a combined portfolio that is actually also nicely diversified to your point. everyone and welcome to Learn with RG. I'm Avan Dabash and with me of course is Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO at Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Now this is season 3. In season 2 Radhika we put the spotlight on active versus passive funds but we want to get a little bit more nuanced, understand it a little bit better so we'll be really driving in and delving into passive investing. And you know, I sort of went on Google and I was checking out what the definition is. And of course it is, uh, you know, talking about mirroring the performance of an index like the Nifty or the Sensex. But thoda simple banate hai. If we can understand, if I'm at a party, someone comes and offers a cheese platter to me mm -hmm. and dips and everything. What would the passive investor, if they had to do, what would be their style of investing? Oh, I like cheese. Uh... <laughs> So I guess what the passive investor would do is, you know, if there's a platter coming around and there's cheddar and gruyere and everything, they would just pick up one of each kind of cheese. And effectively you have an index, just like a Nifty 50 has all 50 stocks yeah. present. Uh, the active investor, not that you asked me that, would probably select, would probably figure out which cheese works with the wine and pick mm -hmm two pieces of cheddar and skip one nementhal, etc, etc and build something that's a lot more customized. So I think that's the difference, holding everything versus choosing what you're going to hold and in what quantity you're going to hold. Okay, so we've broken it down quite simply, sort of picking out all of the cheeses, maybe putting on a little bit of weight, but that's fine. Um, but let's also talk about as a passive investor, what would be the basic goals? So I think as a passive investor, your goal is to get a basic market return if you're investing in a market cap based passive and we'll talk about I guess different kinds of passive. Mm -hmm. But your goal is not to maximize return, optimize return, beat something. It's essentially to meet a basic benchmark and then meet the index rather than beat the index is the way I put it. So meet the uh, index, not beat it. And what would be the role then if we were to understand a little bit more of the fund manager when it comes to passive investing? So I think for that you should understand the role of the fund manager when it comes to active and you know then it will be easier to understand. So the fund manager in the active case is actually picking the different kinds of cheese and choosing what cheese works at what time and with what food. So in, in, in the active world, the fund manager based on market conditions is allocating to sectors uh, that may be relevant at that period in time, choosing stocks that he or she thinks within that sector will do well or not do well, excluding some stocks. Mm. In a passive, and that is judgment, that is the fund manager's judgment. In the passive context, none of this is happening. So there is an index and the index will have a certain number of stocks and it will have those stocks in a certain proportion. The fund manager is actually though, I mean, the role is the passive fund follows the index. The job of the fund management company or the fund manager is just to make sure you efficiently follow the index, whatever it is. So if there are 50 stocks in the index and all are weighted equally, the portfolio has to have those 50 stocks and they all have to be weighted equally. So it just has to be done efficiently. There is no choice. So that's essentially the role of the fund manager. Now from an investor standpoint, let's understand the types of passive investing. I guess the most common would be um, index funds. And then let's touch upon ETFs, which to a certain extent, I think Radhika, zyada flexibility milta hai. So actually passive funds may, if you look at the index fund and ETFs, I would they are cousins. They are both trying to accomplish the same purpose but with slightly different nuances and slightly different benefits for slightly different uh, people. And index fund is very similar to a mutual fund. So many people are familiar with mutual funds. You don't need a DMAT account. A mutual fund gives you its NAV value once a day and you buy a mutual fund, you do an SIP, you know all these things. So an in index fund is the passive cousin of a regular actively managed flexi cap or large cap or any mutual fund that you would have invested in. A ETF is a passive fund that trades like a stock. So 
an ETF in that sense is a passive cousin of a stock in some crude way. It's a fund, both mirror the benchmark, but the difference with an ETF is you hold it in your DMAT account, just like you hold a stock in your DMAT account. Basket of shares. Basket of shares you hold in your DMAT account. So you hold an ETF in your DMAT account. So it's a basket of shares you hold in your DMAT account. Now, if you say that your stock ka, the prices are live, you get prices from when the market opens in the morning till the close. ETFs also have pricing live. That is the difference. And sometimes people think there is a difference in the risk return characteristics of index funds and ETFs. Actually, a nifty index fund and a nifty ETF broadly are the same risk return profile, but because what are they going to give you? They are going to give you the nifty. Now, the index fund is an investor who prefers the features of a mutual fund, who doesn't want a DMAT account, who doesn't want to trade because he, he she needs a price once a day. The ETF investor is someone has a DMAT account and who is a trading oriented investor who wants the live prices, buying in the morning, selling in the afternoon, that kind of thing. So stock and mutual fund cousins of passive funds. Okay, so that's index funds and ETFs and I think that the traditional investor Radhika would associate this with only being focused to equity. So are there any other types? Yeah, actually, yehi hota hai. most people think index fund is equity. Hai. Now the reality is, jitne asset classes hai, there are that many kinds of passive funds. Now, the most common three asset classes that investors are familiar with are equity, debt and commodity. To just break it down, equity may all of us are familiar with things like large cap, like the nifty or mid cap. So, there would be a mid cap index or a mid cap passive fund, small cap. These are the things uh, we are familiar with different sectors. So, everything you are familiar with equity. Debt may, there are debt uh, index funds and debt ETF. So debt passive products that give you exposure to different kind of debt instruments. Debt investors are often familiar with different time horizons. You know, like when you do an FD, you can do a one year FD, you can do a three year FD, you can do a five year FD. So you can have debt funds, debt passive funds with different tenures, one year, three year, five year, everything you get in your normal debt universe, you get in your passive universe. Uh, lot of investors in commodities are familiar with holding gold mm. or silver. So you can get gold and silver passively managed products. So whatever asset classes you have in the actively managed world, there's a passive buy. It's, re it's replicated and I guess many people probably were not aware. And if we want to, you know, uh, talk about the strategies within passive funds as well. Um, when investors believe that perhaps smaller companies have a higher growth potential, market cap weighting, that would be the most common, you'd say? So, you got to understand what is market cap weighted here. You know, most investors, I think that the word market cap weighted is a little heavy, but most investors are familiar with the indices. Se. Sensex, ke mein sabne suna hoga. it's been around since 1994 or well, 1990, long time. Nifty has been around since the mid-90s. What is Sensex? It is the top 30 companies in India by market cap weight, broadly by size. It's the top 30 companies in India by market cap. Nifty is the top 50 companies in India by market cap. And you can invest in, so there are funds that are passive funds based on Sensex or Nifty. Now, some people will be interested in companies that are smaller. So there is something, there's a passive fund based on the small cap index, 250 small cap companies. There's a passive fund based on the mid cap index, 150 companies. Some people say, oh, I don't want either large companies or small companies. Mujhe beach ka kuch chahiye, jisme large cap or mid cap dono ho. So there is a fund that is a mix of large cap and mid cap, large and mid cap, 250. So this is broadly the nuance of what we call market cap weighted funds, that you take an index, which is popular index, hoga, and you replicate it. Why is it called market cap weighted? Because let's take the Nifty as an example. How is the Nifty index, the Nifty that you see flashing on your screens, how is that calculated and been built? You take the top 50 companies in India. So those are 50 kinds of cheeses that you've taken. Now in what quantity are you consuming the cheeses or in what quantity are you holding those companies? Well, it is based on their market cap size. So if one company has 10 times the market cap of the other company, it will have that much more of the weight. That is why it is called market cap weighted. It is basically not consuming each of the 50 cheeses in equal proportion, but in proportion of size. Okay. 
there is an interesting notion which has also come up called equal weighted. Where yeah, I wanted to discuss that as well. So, some investors would have heard of this concept of equal weight where you take the same Nifty, but you say, okay, I am not going to judge based on size. I will just take one of each of these cheeses. I will just consume all of those in equal quantity. There are pros and cons of both, but one is market cap weighted. So, the larger companies get more representation and one is equal weighted where everybody gets an equal say. Chalo, so we understood uh, with respect to smart beta as well. And I think now is what everyone wants to know, pros versus cons. And I think the fact that there is a lot of ease to invest in terms of choosing the passive fund, that would be very appealing for investors. So I think ease is very important because in today's day and age, choices are very hai, schemes are very hai, categories are very hai. And so many investors come and they write and say, I get confused and I just want to start. What do I do? And then which AMC do I pick in which category? So I think a passive fund gives you simplicity. You know, if you are a first time investor, if you're someone who just wants to get started with the investment process, I think your decision making is very simple. You can say, oh, I want exposure to large companies. So I a market cap weighted passive, uh, passive fund. Le leta hon. Oh, I want some exposure to medium sized companies. I'll buy one mid cap one. Oh, I want little bit of gold, so I'll buy one gold passive, etc, etc. So your decision making process becomes very simple because at the minimum what you're doing, just to repeat, is meeting the market. And you don't have, at the minimum, if you're stuck on decision making, you're getting market returns. And that is very valuable because a lot of people don't even start. So I think passive funds are very helpful in that they help you start. Then are a lot of myths about the risk element of passive funds. I think one of the good things with passive funds is just like there's less decision making for you, there's less decision making for the fund manager because in an active fund, so many decisions you're taking, stocks to buy, sectors to buy, trades to do. In a passive fund, you're copying an index. So the risk of that sense of so fund, lower yeah, lower fund manager risk of going wrong. Obviously, if you're buying a nifty index fund or a small cap index fund, there is a risk you're buying equity. Mm -hmm. So that risk doesn't go away. But that extra decision making risk now, which stock to buy goes away in that sense. Uh, so that is important. Okay, so E is lower risk from the fund manager standpoint. And then maybe even the fact that lower cost. So I think cost is important. But I always caution investors not to be over obsessed with yeah, cost. That uh, be the only yeah, because sometimes you know the cost is important in investing. And you know, you cost is a determinant of returns because finally returns are net of cost. But it is also very dangerous to just scroll and say, let me buy things that are lowest cost without thinking, is this right for me? Is this a good fit for me? Do I understand it? So yes, passive funds are very cost efficient for sure. And that is important and that's an appeal. And then let's look at it from the other side because there are of course some cons and I think limited control would be one of them. Yeah, so limited control in the sense, you know, I know with uh, some funds, both investors ko lagta hai, achha, mere fund manager ne, he's held this stock, she's held this stock. And then there may be an event in the stock and then you ask. So with a passive fund, you're copying the platter, right? So it will have good things, it will have bad things. Sometimes there may be a stock that has event risk or that you feel is fundamentally not very good or has qualities that you don't like you can't choose to remove it from the index because the fund's job is just to mirror the index. So you have no control as to what goes in the fund. And sometimes there will be stocks in the news, there will be names that you think are questionable that will be sitting in index funds. That comfort of your portfolio that you would have over an active fund, you don't have here. So I think that that's one thing. The second is you can never in, in a passive fund, the maximum return you can get is the market return. You can't beat the market because they are not designed to uh, beat the market. They are designed to meet the market. So in meeting the market, you will get market return minus some cost. That's it. And um, now that we've understood the pros and the cons, some uh, of financial objectives uh, here, well diversified is what everyone talks about. Yeah. Is the best strategy or one of the strategies that you'd like to explain a combination of active and passive? I think Achha question hai because a lot of people think ki this is about active versus passive and could bahut debate honi chahiye. And I really think the answer is active and passive and honestly aap consumers hai. And as consumers you should take advantage of 
both kind of funds to build what I call a complementary portfolio, which means that, you know, there will be times that you will need active funds. There will be times that active funds do well. But there will be times when your active fund has picked a sector that is out of favor, that has picked some stocks that may be fundamentally good but are out of favor. And that active fund may not be performing, uh, you know, may not be beating the market. But you have a passive fund to compensate for when the active fund is not performing. And reverse times may happen where your fund manager has high conviction, they have made bets, they are doing well, the passive fund is not performing. So in that sense, you know, they, they are complements to each other. One other way I think to think about construction is, I love core satellite as an approach. It's something I use. Can, can you give examples when you talk about core satellite? Yeah, so if I look at core satellite, so you form a part of your portfolio that is I call your daily meal, it's core. And you pick two, three categories of passive funds. Say, mujhe ek large cap, low cost, large cap passive chahiye. Ek low cost, large cap, mid cap fund chahiye. Aur ek debt fund chahiye, passive. Ye tino mere core portfolios hain. This is my basic asset allocation and needs. I just want market returns. But satellite, I want some specialized ideas. Like there's a sector I find particularly interesting. There I choose an active fund where a fund house has expertise. Or there is a category like small cap where I feel a particular fund manager will really be able to outperform at value again has expertise. There I pick the small cap fund as a satellite. So I've mixed passive funds in my core, active funds in my satellite to build a combined portfolio that's actually also nicely diversified to your point. Okay, so I guess maybe even in cases, you know, when the active is underperforming due to some skewed sectoral backs, as you said, passive will hold. Exactly, and both of them will balance each other it out in your investment journey. Okay, so if we were to just sort of summarize what we've discussed right now, the fact that um, what a passive fund is, it's an investment vehicle that tracks a market index, say the Sensex or the Nifty. The goal, of course, is to highlight that they match the performance of the index, not to outperform. As Radhika said, meet it, not beat it. Uh, market cap weighting, we discussed that as one of the most common approaches. It is easy, of course, to choose a passive fund. That's one of the pros. There's diversification. But then, of course, um, you know, looking at um, uh, the risk factor, that as well is monitored. Um, when it comes to using both approaches, passive as well as active, they can really complement each other for the portfolio. And in terms of the overall target audience, long-term investors, beginners, and cost-conscious investors can really look at passive investing. So thanks to everyone for really tuning in and watching this episode of Learn with RG. Uh, next up, we will be discussing ETFs and Smart Beta factor-based funds, so do stay tuned for that. You can follow us on Instagram as well as on Twitter on Edelweiss Mutual Fund as well as track the YouTube channel for more content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel Edelweiss Mutual Fund and click on the bell icon for notifications. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.